Located next to the mighty Missouri River, the 55th Wing at Offutt Air Force Base, Nebraska, brings a real impact to the United States Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance Mission. With operating locations around the world, there's an extremely high likelihood that a 55th Wing aircraft is airborne somewhere. This is why we say the sun never sets on the fight in 55th. The 55th Wing is a heavy hitter with some impressive stats. Largest wing in Air Combat Command. Largest Security Forces Squadron and Operations Group in the Air Force. Second largest employer in Nebraska. But none of this mattered on 15 March 2019 when a disastrous and historic 500-year flood covered one-third of the base. Leading up to this event, Nebraska had record snow levels with record low temperatures. This was followed by what's called a bomb cyclone or winter hurricane, causing temperatures to soar 61 degrees and dumping over six inches of rain. Levees lining the Missouri and Platte rivers were breached and those waters overtopped the levees surrounding the base, which caused over a billion dollars in damages and displaced more than 3,200 personnel. The water covered more than a quarter of the nearly 12,000 foot runway. And well over a year since the flood, many of Offutt's airmen are still displaced, training and operating in inadequate makeshift locations around the base. Point out the various mold and stuff that's all over the walls. Lieutenant Colonel Chris Conover, 55th Wing Director for the Base's Recovery and Rebuild Program Management Office, spoke to us on the process and took us on a tour to show us the conditions of flood-destroyed buildings. You can see the, the water line on the sides. And the areas where displaced personnel have been working. Here we are at Tenet Hall, former home of the 97th Intelligence Squadron, the largest flying intelligence squadron in the Air Force, close to 600 personnel. This is a two-story building with approximately 58,000 square feet and used to be an entire secret compartment information facility, or SCIF. Because this building is only eight years old and includes a second level, it has become one of the few facilities we determined is salvageable and are making great strides to repurpose it. Since the building sits below the flood level and we can't raise it, we're designing it to have a sacrificial floor, meaning a wash and rinse approach should flooding occur. So the 97th Intelligence Squadron loses 58,000 square feet of space, which is crucial to their mission. And with the building next door also destroyed, the losses just keep piling up. So we're inside the remains of the Intelligence Support Squadron, which housed our mission crew training systems. We produce several thousand training events a month. These simulators were crucial for our initial qualification and continuation training programs but this capability was lost in the flood. Even the great folks from our program manager, Big Safari, came in here and did everything they could to salvage the equipment. They cut out individual components and cables to see if they could repurpose it. Unfortunately, the majority was lost to the tune of $234 million. Altogether, 118,000 square feet of skiff space was destroyed, which is just a fraction of the 1.2 million square feet of overall workspace affected. So to continue the mission, the operations moved into Building D. We're in a 79-year-old building. This is the bomber building where the Enola Gay was built and the boxcar. And we were able to turn 200,000 square feet of decommissioned space that hadn't been used in 15 to 10 years back into workspace for our folks. But that workspace has some major issues. The temporary air ducts running through the hallways vent the air to protect them from asbestos. And the skiff space needed to be put in the basement. About four to 500 intelligence personnel typically worked in this area, but now under current COVID conditions, occupancy is limited. If you recall the building where all the simulator equipment and where all the very thick black mold was on the walls and the ceilings, that was the space these airmen used to work in. And this space is less than 25% of what's needed. The shortfalls of Building D can't be downplayed because right above their heads, vehicles and heavy equipment are being moved, causing vibrations, which loosens the concrete. So inside the ceiling, there's a netting system to help catch any debris. Additionally, this building is anything but watertight. This parachute-like collection system helps capture contaminated water and keeps it away from vital electronics, communications infrastructure, and personnel. After this 500-year flood occurred, Offutt was directed to complete very basic but inaccurate DD forms called 1391s, necessary for new military construction while simultaneously working to bring operations back online, bedding down 3,200 personnel, and cleaning up 52,000 pounds of flood-destroyed classified material. Due to the non-standard planning timeline, the original estimates were low. Now, after we have gathered accurate requirements and continue through a sound design process, cost estimates have risen and could continue to rise. Flood destruction led to an eight campus approach containing 26 new facilities that align like functions as a result of the 137 facilities affected by the flood. The overlay of the base shows the flood that covered one third of the base. 
The best place to rebuild, believe it or not, is in the same area. This was a 500 year flood. The levees around the base will be raised an additional three feet to the 100 year flood level. Additionally, Congress has mandated that new military construction in this area be raised to the 100 year flood level plus three feet for mission critical installations. Let's take a look at all the campuses. The first one is the Nuclear Command Control and Communications Facility for the Airborne Missions in support of Strategic Command. Next, we have the Satellite Communications Campus that will be relocated up on the hill near the old Strategic Command Building to support the nuclear enterprise. Here we have the Multi-Domain Operations Campus which supports worldwide SIGINT operations and processing along with information warfare convergence. To support the base's critical infrastructure and the nuclear mission, we have an emergency power microgrid system that connects generators across the base to provide backup power and resiliency for our missions. Next, we have the Security Forces Campus that houses the largest Security Forces squadron in the Air Force of 600 plus personnel that supports both Strategic Command and our ISR missions. Here we have the Logistics Readiness Squadron Campus to support our airfield and all of our bases needs for both forward deployed bases and our mission partners. The Flight Line Campus will provide petroleum, oil, lubricants, liquid oxygen, and aircraft servicing at the Flight Line for the E-6 Looking Glass, E-4 NAOC, and the Wings mix of 135 ISR aircraft. The Base Lake, which is a small cost, high impact effort supporting 44 and a half thousand community personnel, which also provides an income stream for the Morale Welfare Fund. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. We appreciate it. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to build this base and we're gonna do it right. As directed by senior Air Force leadership, we're gonna build the base that we need, not the base that we had. And this will lead us into the next generation of war fighting.